So first, the surprising result in the NLCS. We already know there isn't much of a difference among the teams in the upper echelon of Major League Baseball. But Arizona has now gone through the Brewers, Dodgers, and Phillies. One of our themes of winning baseball this season is control what you can control. The Diamondbacks did that in Game 7. Let's do a little digging in. What did we talk about yesterday on this program at length? In an elimination game, go A squad. Do not let your season end with your best pitcher standing in the pen, looking threatening with their low ERAs and their high strikeout rates. You're thinking, no, it doesn't happen. Oh, really? In this very postseason, the Astros were eliminated in a game where they didn't use their closer. The Rays, another bullpen-centric team, lost without ever using their closer. The Marlins lost using their closer when it was already down by six runs in one game. Didn't matter. And the Dodgers lost in an elimination game with their second-string guys on the mound. These aren't foolish teams, but it can happen if you don't attack the game. So here's the board that we put up on Tuesday's show showing who had to pitch for the Diamondbacks. And this is done by the Diamondbacks. They have established an A squad. You see, we use a leverage index. This is who they use in winning time, right? You don't want to go back home with those guys standing around in the bullpen unused. A squad, it's Paul Sewell, Kevin Ginkle, Andrew Salfrank, he's the left-hander, and Ryan Thompson, all right? Salfrank faces the Phillies' big, big lefties. That's your A squad. Use those guys. Let's go to the game. Bottom of the fifth, starter Brandon Fott. He's been excellent. He's your starter. He's your big guy. But Kyle Schwarber's leading off, and that makes it the third time through the order. I'm going to ask you now, is it smart to face Schwarber and Bryce Harper the third time through the order? No, it is not. We have been showing you this throughout the series. Over the last two years, Harper and Schwarber light guys up the third time they see them. Harper slugs 745, number one in all of baseball. Schwarber slugs 600. Avoid this if you can. Tori Lovello does just that. Everyone kills Lovello for taking out his starters proactively. He's making the smart play. But first up, I have to say, is Joe Mantiply. He's your number two lefty. Remember, he had a 4.62 ERA this year. No disrespect, but I'm sorry, he's not A-squad. It was 3-2 Diamondbacks Phillies. This game could have gotten away right here. Mantiply gives up a double to Kyle Schwarber, and then with one out, Bryce Harper didn't miss that by much, did he? That would have been a 4-3 Phillies lead. Think about that. He missed by a bit. It was a big scare. Could have been 4-3. Would have changed the allocation of pressure and airflow quite a bit. But it didn't happen. Okay. They got through that, though. They were kind of lucky. From that point forward, Lavello and Arizona were on point. Remember, there's no perfect solution here, but you can make the smart play. What gives you the best probability of success? That's all you can do. Go back to that fifth inning. The rule is a pitcher has to face three batters. That's all meant to play would get. They'd seen enough. Ryan Thompson with that wild motion. Look at this guy. Comes on with two outs, gets the final out in the fifth, gets Alec Bohm, who would hit a home run earlier in the game, and then Thompson would pitch the sixth inning. In the seventh inning, three of the next five Phillies are left-handed batters. Time to bring in the number one lefty, Andrew Salfrank. This is what they were saving him for. The rookie strikes out Brandon Marsh, but then he gets a little loose, walking the next two, including the dangerous lefty, Kyle Schwarber. League minimum is three batters. That's all he gets. This is a beautiful move by Lavello. The game is on the line right here, right now. Leading by two, two on, one out. He has Kevin Ginkle and Paul Sewald in the pen. They're about the same in performance, actually, even though Sewald has the higher prestige. He's the veteran. He's the closer. And this is the order that they're used to. It's a squad. Win or lose with your best. Kevin Ginkle comes in. It's Trey Turner and Bryce Harper. And the batters, you have to say, are no longer as loose as they were earlier in the series. Ginkle gets two flyouts, made Turner look bad, and the most important point of the game has passed. Ginkle works the eighth, strikes out the side. He only faced five batters. He retired all of them, and now it's time for the closer. Paul Sewald comes on, he's been locked in, and he will finish things off with no issues. The game sped up on the Phillies a little bit, didn't it? Even with that formidable offense, it was a cruise to the finish. So it's easy to look past what Torrey Lovello did in this game. It worked, people move on, but one, he did not let his starter, no matter how good he was, face the Phillies lineup a third time. Phillies allowed their starter to do that. Again, third time, a hitter tracks what's coming much better. Two, he tightened the circle of trust. That's mine, by the way. Everyone's using that now. That's mine, but not too tight. The lefty pitchers are less than dominant, but he used them in the right spot, got them out as soon as he could. Again, three batters, they're out. And then he applied A squad. Thompson, Ginkle, Seawald, high leverage, finished off a clinic against a high-powered team. These decisions matter, and last night it helped Arizona 
get past a fairly stacked club.